All right, so quickly, let's just get a taste of what has been happening in the markets this week so far. Um, essentially, this week, we've seen a bearish market um, in the Treasury bills space. And then for the bonds market, it's essentially been quiet because of um, expectations at the bond auction. So we've seen a quiet market for the bond auction. And due to the very low liquidity levels this week, we've seen a bearish market for Treasury bills. All right, so but how are the, our investors uh, positioned in light of the uh, auctions today? How are what? How are traders positioning ahead of the auctions today? Um, I mean, the expectation is that um, there will be some demand from local investors, and this should um, um, take yields to about 15, 15.25, and about 15.15 across the three tenors. So we expect that we'll see demand at the auction, and we expect a lot of activity mostly on the 10 year reopening. Okay, so moving on to tomorrow, I'm hearing there's a possible OMO auction in the works for tomorrow. Um, any idea how this would impact market sentiments? I mean, um, there's a maturity of about 300 billion tomorrow, and so there's an anticipated OMO auction. Also, it's one of the reasons why we also see the bearish sentiment in the Treasury bill space. So we expect that um, the CBN should come with an OMO auction and possibly leave stop rates where they were at the last time. Okay, but how do you see this impacting liquidity in the market? I mean, as it is at the moment, um, liquidity is sub-100 billion, and with the auction, depending on how aggressive the central bank is willing to go tomorrow, then we'll see um, where liquidity levels should go. And with the bond auction settlements that should hold on Friday and the retail auction as well, liquidity is a big thing at the moment. So even with an auction, I guess I'm, I'm suspecting that the most banks will want to play it safe because they still have some funding to do on Friday. Your thoughts on the CBN's um, intervention in the market so far this week? Um, you mean with regards to FX? Yes, with regards to FX. Um, t typically, we've seen um, them coming at their usual wholesale auction, the SME and Invisibles market. So um, yesterday, we saw them inflow about $210 million into the market. Um, at the INE window, typically we don't see it on a daily basis, but for October alone, but for, for September alone, we saw CBN intervene for about $2 billion into the market. So I see that the central bank is still active in the interbank in the investors and I, um, exporters window, which is instilling a lot of confidence for the international counterparties. But how is this impacting the FX reserves? Of course, um, I mean, especially from May, we've seen CBN um, intervene with about $5.2 billion into the market, and that has been a large component of the reserves decline. So we've seen the reserves decline about 47, from $47 billion to about $43 billion. So most of it is largely the intervention at the INE window. But has it been playing out with the stability of the Naira? How is what? How has the interventions, basically, and the, and the, the, the FX reserves, the depletion of the reserves, how is this strategy helping to stabilize the Naira? I mean, with all of the demand that we're seeing from international investors, the CBN has been able to create some stability in the INE space. Yet to date, the rates at the INE window have, have depreciated sub 2%. So we've, we've seen some stability in that space. At the moment, it's the exporter season, so we're seeing even inflows coming and seeing some appreciation in the rates. I, the rates peaked at about 365, but yesterday they closed at 363.94. Okay, on the euro bond, uh, we've seen that the Senate gave the approval, you know, for that for that euro bond, and then the the arrangements have been announced as well. How do you what do you make of of the euro bond with regards to the likely pricing and the subscription rates? I believe the euro bond is going to be received well. Um, we may not get the eight times subscription that we got at the last time, but with um, the yields that we're offering, which is 9%, we're about 600 basis points above one year LIBOR at the moment. And then we also have uh, capacity, which is the current level of the reserve, which is about 17 to 20% import cover. And projections near term for the oil prices are that they'll still be around 80 eighty dollars per barrel so with all of those metrics in hand i believe that the euro bond will be received well and I expect that we'll see significant interest but when you look at the global environment you see what's happening in the u.s with the fed and uh, you know when you talk about the rates they're probably going to get from international borrowings do you think uh, our foray into this this market will be sustainable in the long run 
do we think? Uh, for it into uh, go, uh, for it into the international markets for funds for euro bonds, do you think this will be sustainable in the longer term? Um, at the moment, we've seen a lot of repatriation by international investors, and it's it's also for various reasons. Of course, one, the Fed rates, and then we also have elections and a lot of a bit of unrest in some of the emerging markets. But I expect them to come back. I expect that um, um, the cent the central bank is making moves, particularly with um, regards to the rates for the FGN securities, to create some more interest in the Naira space. So I still see that we can also attend to the risk premiums. The yields that the securities are giving can cover the risk premiums that they might be exposed to. I believe once the dust settles after elections, we should still see their interest come back into the market. Okay, but on, on, the, on the, in the, in the local demand here, when you look at the elections coming up, you know, how do you see campaign funding impacting the, the Naira going forward? Um, with the elections coming up, I mean, there's still some fear. We've seen a lot of um, capital flight to safety and quality. Um, for the, for the um, outcome of the elections, I mean, a lot of things are not clear at the moment. Maybe a few, a few months back, we would have thought that maybe the incumbent will still be president, but with a lot of um, changes that we've seen in recent times, there's, still, there's now some uncertainty as to what the outcome of the elections could be. And... Um, until then, we may not be able to see, we may, we may not be able to know what the reaction could be from the international counterparties. All right. In the shorter term, though, how do you see, what, do, what would you say are your, some of your key highlights that would impact ma the fixed income and, and the treasury bills market this week? This week? Yeah, this week. Um, this week, for the treasury bills market, it will be mostly the liquidity. So. Tomorrow, once the OMO auction holds and we see the results, if, if the central bank is aggressive enough to mop off a lot of what matures or if not everything, we're going to be back to sub-100 levels, as I earlier said. And with all of the settlements that we're seeing the banks um, obliged to by the end of the week, I expect that there will be some selling yeah. in the market. Okay, but the fact credits, we know they're expected soon, though, but um, do you think they might hit the market this week or early next week? Sorry? The FAC credits. Yes. Do you think they might hit the market later this week or early next week? I expect it next week. I expect it next week? Yes. Okay. All right then. So we'll keep our eyes and see how the market is going. But I'd just quickly like to get what your take for the next, early next week will be. Sorry? What's your outlook for the rest of the next week will be? Um, next week, uh, of course, depending on if we get the FAC credits, then we could see some improvement in market liquidity and then the reversal in the bearish trend that we're experiencing in the Treasury bill space. Um, I mean, if a lot of local investors take up the, the securities at the bond auction, they will, could also experience some trading as well in the bond, um, bond auction space, particularly on the 10-year, which is the 2028. But um, if the liquidity doesn't come in as expected, we expect that the bearish sentiment will continue. All right.